I was here with Mauro and uh, Mila Baldo Ciolin. This is where I've learned the very little Italian I know and uh, worked here for Neutrino, so that it's equally fun. So my, my, my idea is to present to you what happened recently. We presented the roadmap from APEC and try to put a little bit more science in the way that we will present it, but not too much because, of course, I don't have enough time. In the first and second, I would not concentrate on the gravitational waves because we will be seeing it a lot, but mostly on the other part that you will not be hearing a lot. So this is essentially the program. And uh, no, sorry. So uh, <clears throat> we, we are doing astroparticle physics and cosmology since many years, especially on the institutional side. And I always like, because there were times more difficult on that. We had to persuade our funding agencies that gravitational waves is not a risky thing, it's something that they should do. And there I was using always this philosophical statement by Hans Blumenberg that I like a lot, that says that an interdisciplinary enterprise must assume for some time a lesser precision than this claimed by canonical branches of learning. Among the particularities of these canonical branches of learning is the fact that they are comforted in their self-sufficiency by claiming always a larger precision than what is reasonable to expect, and anyway, they have obtained this precision by isolating and diminishing the size of the object under study without any theoretical counterpart. Since it does not accept the well-defined limitation of its object, interdisciplinarity starts by giving a slight impression of deception. This is what we have lived, and this we have changed. So APEC, I reminded you very fast, at the end of the previous century, we had a burst of extraordinary discoveries from the supernova in neutrinos, the fluctuations of uh, CMB, dark energy, neutrino oscillation, but also things. They were given Nobel Prizes, but there were other things that we did not get Nobel Prizes. For instance, Sarah Rubin established well dark matter, the existence of dark matter. We had also photons, uh, high energy by weeks and, and all. And that, that, thus, we thought around 2001 that we should try to organize in Europe because we were seeing that uh, large infrastructures are coming, and we should prepare for that. And these days, 2018, APEC, which is Astroparticle European Consortium, has uh, all these countries in, has uh, this uh, structure you see here uh, with a last meeting. Currently, is Antonio uh, Maciero, who is uh, the uh, who is uh, the uh, yeah, who is the chair. Uh, you know him very well, if not uh, living very far and Job de Kloiver, who is uh, the general secretary. And uh, we are also distributed uh, along uh, a few functional centers. One of them uh, uh, is in France, another one is DESI, the third one is INFN, and we have smaller centers both in LSC and SCFC. Uh, we have a, a committee, a scientific advisory committee, where Mauro is also a very eminent member. We had the loss of uh, Pierre Binetri, uh, uh, and uh, these days we're thinking of making an APEC center in EGO in the European Gravitational Observatory. Well, scientific objectives, what are strategic objectives of APEC, what it is, coordination of European astroparticle physics, long-term strategies, the roadmap I will present, collective views to express them towards the different fora, and then try to coordinate nationally convergence of future large-scale projects we will be seeing, and I will tell you more about it. A little bit, uh, a few words about history. Uh, around 2008, we made a scientific vision. We called it uh, the Seven Magnificent. And the Seven Magnificent, actually, in nature, it was a two-page article. This is how they presented it. I have uh, something from the field. The hidden message was there that we were trying to protect a fragile village from the, let's say, organized crime all around. So uh, that's, that was the message. I don't think we need it anymore, but this is what the, the joke behind it, it was. Many people said, look, uh, there are at least four of them that will die at the end. No, nobody did. These were, in 2011, our priorities. And you see there things that we promised in 2011 that have been done to implement advanced gravitational uh, antennas, tone scale of dark matter and neutrino SW beta decay. They prepare the construction of large infrastructures. and. Uh, try to coordinate globally large neutrino detectors, dark energy, and CMB. And I will be telling you about what we did about that. Then, so this is was what, what was that, and actually some people were saying that, yes, but 
from our, your seven magnificent, at least five have not been seen a signal yet. Uh, well, friends, we know now that it is not true anymore. Only three have not seen a signal yet. 2013, 2015, we had detections, and this is what uh, comes now in 2017 and we proposed in Brussels. Now, let me try to put, categorize in two large categories. Actually, these were the large categories that we used uh, in Brussels. The themes. The themes, I think, is that we arrive at the point where we understand that the cosmic structures on the CMB to the present present uh, comparable constraints. You can measure particle physics on ground, and you can present, you can measure cosmology up in the sky, and you can compare, uh, for the first time, the, the sensitivities are, are uh, similar, and therefore you can find, it can be either a confirmation or most, what we hope, a portal to new physics. So this is what I say always, it re reminds us of uh, mystic things, the or Aurea Catena, the golden chain of Homer, or even Jacob's cosmic ladder, and uh, we, I will show afterwards what it is these days. I mean, let's uh, say that it is uh, the cosmic ladder, and it is Planck scale, grand unification, leptogenesis, dark matter, femiscale physics, and all that. That's our cosmic ladder. We try to unify, and this is the first theme, and the second theme is multi-messenger astronomy, which you know where you put all the all the uh, the messengers that we'll be talking about. This you could compare to uh, what, for instance, in Pythic Fix we do to guidance for the future. You either try theoretical inconsistency that you need, for instance, supersymmetry in order to stabilize the Higgs mass, or you need experimental precision. Through the experimental precision, you get a prediction of what would be uh, the top, the Higgs, etc., etc. I like to joke that. Uh, 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 so particle physics is like cosmic psychoanalysis because it, uh, it uh, examines the dark and violent parts of the universe to get access to its use. It is, uh, uh, well, it's a job. Anyway, so doing the cosmic structures, let's start by this. You know, all of you, you know the famous uh, 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 pizza or camembert, depending on where you are, uh, where you have, uh, I'm sorry, in the, where you have uh, a lot of ma numbers, which are dark matter, dark energy is a big part of the, our universe, we know that, and uh, normal matter is only a small part, and these are, all of these things are challenges for understanding of the universe. Actually, I found uh, only yesterday uh, a comparison in the web, uh, you see reasons why I'm currently alive, and the dark part is coffee, and this is the biggest part of, uh, I mean, uh, the others, oxygen, etc. It's not important. Anyway, so this, again, it's a joke, that, but it's not only a joke. Uh, 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 George Smoot, when he got his Nobel Prize, he passed from Paris, and someone said, you, you feel, uh, you feel uh, proud of understanding well the universe, and you tell us you got a Nobel Prize for that, but you tell us also that you don't understand at least 95% of it. And then he said that, well, it's like as we were in the previous century, previous at, well, at the time it was uh, uh, 20th century, uh, we understand the laws of the gases, but we don't understand yet uh, the microphysics. And this was a, a comment made by an economist, and he said, actually, the economist is like you. You understand macroeconomics, but you don't understand microeconomics. And then afterwards, it was 2006, who understood they did not understand microeconomics either. Anyway, cosmology. So, cosmology is the link between the near and far universe, and you study it either by large surveys uh, close by, well-defined program, Euclid, LSST, and DESI, and uh, trying to assess inflation through efforts we did that unfortunately in Europe did not uh, yet fare very well. We had uh, uh, ESA mission were tried and did not get passed through the first stages, and we had also a coordination of CMB on Earth, organized, uh, this mostly organized by APEC, but again this was not accepted by the European Union. And the, what happens in between is of course that you know that neutrinos and dark matter are circulating everywhere, and this gives a link for the first time the whole 
thing can be unified, what I was telling about, uh, about how the sensitivities are comparable and how these sensitivities uh, make us uh, uh, confident that we detect something. So, for instance, we, you know that, of course, uh, the Big Bang, uh, you, in the Big Bang, uh, inflation uh, has, uh, has uh, puts, puts uh, 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 gives gravitational waves. They impinge uh, the, on a quadrupodal structure on matter. Photons scattering from this matter get a bipolarization, and by studying this, at the, at the large angles or small l, you might be able to understand the, uh, the, uh, the, the part of the uh, of gravitational waves, uh, if you wish, on, uh, on the CMB. And then you also get other stuff, which is essentially the lensing of uh, uh, other polarizations, uh, like E. And this, when you say lensing, you mean mass. And when you mean mass, you have access to the neutrino mass. You have how neutrinos uh, uh, change the distribution of matter. And there, the main, uh, th our main goal is a generation four, where we hope to have a ratio of tensor, meaning inflation uh, 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 origin, to scalar perturbation of the order of one per mil. And this is uh, also what we hope to do with dark energy surveys, not only try to see uh, not only the uh, accelerating part, but also the decelerating part, understand the whole, the whole history here of the Hubble constant, and uh, also, of course, determine uh, with a, a huge precision the state of energy, huge meaning 1% these days. And, of course, as I said before, when you study the larger structures, you always can determine the neutrino mass and the effective number of neutrinos that you have, and this is again something that will be uh, common. And talking about neutrinos, you also know in this place also, but of course you are more in the gravitational waves, that we have uh, uh, the famous oscillations of neutrinos. We have uh, 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 two kinds of masses, the atmospheric and the solar. Uh, one of the issues is what is the hierarchy of these masses? What is, let's say, the lowest uh, or the highest uh, neutrino state? What is mixture it is? And, of course, we know that the neutrino mixing is uh, different from the, what you have in the quark. And the masses are much smaller than the mass of the rest of the standard model particles. And, therefore, it most probably gives us access to higher scales, to, I mean, to the Planck scale, things close to the Planck scale uh, through, for instance, CISO. Then, of course, the big, uh, the big graal would be to understand through CP violation and also I may see a neutrinoless double beta decay where it would mean that neutrinos are majorana, and there uh, we would uh, have a, a clue to the matter antimatter asymmetry in the universe. For instance, the latest, this program goes as uh, uh, Maurer said some, in some other meeting, actually in Brussels, it's going faster than we expected, and for instance, you start seeing for Innova that there is a preference these days for exactly CP violation around this point. And unfortunately, for the, for the people that are studying uh, um, neutrino less double beta decay, the normal hierarchy seems to be preferred, but a few sigma, not too much. So these are the neutrinos, very shortly. Uh, we have huge sources in the cosmos. Uh, you have them here from the CMB to very high energy cosmic neutrinos. And we, of course, can produce them in uh, reactors and accelerators. And there you have the programs that are, are concerned in our, uh, uh, in our, uh, uh, in the energies uh, that are concerned in our uh, roadmap, WSHU, uh, Juno, uh, Dune, uh, and also kilometer cube net, the low, the middle energy part, and uh, the, the higher energy kilometer cube uh, and uh, ice cube, and uh, then other things. So. What do we hope there? What we hope there is that by, let's say, six, seven years from now, we know to, let's say, I don't know, four, three, four, five sigma, the, the mass uh, the hierarchy, the mass hierarchy. A more difficult task is, of course, to try to measure directly the mass of the neutrinos through double beta decay. And this for two reasons. First of all, we have good access 
to, uh, I mean, the, our current uh, uh, sensibility is somewhere here in the inverse hierarchy, as I said, and uh, it will be very difficult to go to the normal hierarchy, and not only that, uh, we have factors inside the calculation of the time, lifetime that are not, uh, are not very well known. It might be that we think that we have covered it, but we did not yet. Therefore, but nevertheless, it's a very active domain, this uh, domain, and we have a lot. I didn't manage to have uh, the results, uh, for, uh, but many recent results are coming. Of course, they are always somewhere at the upper level here. Okay. Then, that's what I was saying here. You will measure the mass of the neutrino, the effective uh, number of neutrinos in the uh, Generation 4 program at a, a huge precision, 16 uh, milli electron volts, and the, effective, and the error on the number of effective neutrinos, 2%. You know that the sum of the masses through the oscillation should be at least 58 milli electron volts compared to 16. Therefore, you will be able to compare by comparing, either you find the same thing or you don't. And if you don't, it's a portal to new things. Non-cost and dark energy, non-power low primordial perturbation spectrum. Why not these days with the primordial black holes, extraparticle radiation species? And then there are even tensions, as in every good uh, uh, period, there are tensions between the, how you measure the number of uh, galaxies, let's say, and uh, the matter, in the, when you measure it close, and when you uh, measure it close to the, uh, not far, that is close to the recombination error. And these tensions here, the latest one, but this, you can have it in many, many ways, this uh, one, these tensions might be showing something that uh, we are looking already, something new. And I saw in uh, yesterday or two days ago that even ET uh, will give us uh, measurements that would be comparable with it. So, not a competition between neutrino experiments and, uh, and the cosmology, but, as I say, a portal to new physics. In order to be able to do that, we organized things uh, that were very interesting, I think, and had a decisive uh, fact, impact. First was the International Meeting for Large Neutrino Infrastructures. In the first one in Paris, we decided that we'll concentrate uh, on, uh, for instance, uh, one big part of LBNF and UNA as an international program, and then we have, of course, uh, uh, the Japanese program that it is also going on, and uh, in, in, at CERN we have uh, R&D very, very advanced, and the Florence workshops that started here, uh, and uh, here meaning in Florence, and where we try to coordinate a little bit what's happening in the CMB. So, the other thing that is extraordinary with this story is that uh, these days we can use the primordial light and through lensing we can have access to the whole mass, dark mass or neutrino mass of the universe, mostly dark mass, I would say. And, uh, and this is extraordinary and the question is what can we do with this dark mass? And, uh, well, dark uh, mass is of course dark matter. You have a zillions of possibilities. We have been concentrating a lot recently into the dark, the WIMPs as, uh, as, uh, as sort of uh, uh, the prototype of what dark matter is. And we have a newcomer, the primordial black holes, which are, have been constrained uh, in the previous, depending on the mass function, they have been constrained more or less, but uh, still it is something that is something new, but very interesting anyway we start seeing that it may be that we have uh, two kinds of uh, uh, dark mass and not just on, only one. So this, I still, I'm still a believer in supersymmetry because, for instance, the Higgs is, is compatible with the maximum allowed by SUSY, but we have to see. You have other people that are saying that the intermediate uh, black hole masses we're seeing these are gravitational lensing effects, and this is smooth at, at all. Dark matter, again, very alive, very alive. We had two extraordinary results recently. First, uh, dark side have shown that they can go to very low energies, very low, up to one or two. They are this, I mean, you had here a possible signal, so they have orders of magnitude better. So they are, dark side means it's liquid uh, argon, and liquid xenon, we are operating at one ton, and we'll have results very soon. So, this 
needs for collaboration, large collaboration, uh, worldwide, global. You never manage, for instance, to have one plot showing both liquid argon and liquid uh, xenon together. Where, wherever it does that, it does, forgets completely about the other. But anyway, our task, I think, in APEC is in the two or three years that come to uh, coordinate uh, this effort because it will not be many detectors. It will be at least two globally, one, let's say, in the U.S. Uh, or in Asia, or three, let's say, one in the U.S., one in Asia, one in Europe. And one of the also interesting things that's happened lately is that the Argon people at least are together, and I think also the Xenon people are together. So we have to follow up this and try to see what will be the G3 multiton experiment where. In order to do that, of course, you need underground science, and you have a network of underground labs, and of course, the biggest one here in Italy. We need the European and global coordination towards multiton installation, and this is, if you wish, one of the uh, main tasks of the next three years of the roadmap process. So, I said all this. Uh, the measure of the universe, if you wish, we have a good uh, program for neutrino and dark energy. We still need to define what happens in the CMB and what happens in the multiton dark matter, the underground science. Underground science and CMB still need to a better definition, if you want my, my reading of our roadmap. Then, of course, you have the multi-messenger uh, things, which I will go very fast, because I'm talking to people that even know it probably better than me. And, uh, of course, we know that dark matter and energy do not suffice to understand the formation of structure. We need the violent effect. Oh, shit. And, of course, here uh, uh, there are links with everything, including, of course, nuclear physics. You will be hearing about it. These are quite stabilized. The program of multi-messenger universe on what concerns APEC is really, uh, you know, screwed on the, on the floor in the sense that you have a program and the, here the issues are not anymore what will be the global infrastructure, but how you organize this global infrastructure. What would be, for instance, for ET and uh, for CTA, the institution that will be, will be sort of uh, coordinating this, data access, computing, um, you know, I'm discussing a lot with Michele these days, all these things, and of course, and they have very similar program, all problems. So they, for instance, the question whether they would have in, in European version an ERIC, all of these problems are there. And Auger, I mean, although it is an older infrastructure, it has a historical, because this is the first time with, where many countries paid only 10% of the, of the infrastructure. There was no leading country, and nevertheless, they managed to make something work. So, of course, the beginning of dawn of multi messenger era, I will not spend a single uh, word on it. Uh, you know it better than me. But also, I would like to point out that these days, you see that even in the high energy part, what you see in Ice Cube and uh, in the high energy part in Auger and in Fermi starts to being very coherent. And therefore, there too, which is a very high energy part, we would start to see a multi-messenger program developing. New challenge, worldwide collaboration. I've said about that. It's a few minutes clear. Uh, but, uh, uh, I, you will be hearing about it even by immediately afterwards. And as I said, here it's not defining the program, but mostly what would be the global institution that will be managing it. The, the things that will be seen by ET, I will just flash it, but they are fantastic, uh, great reach, cosmological reach. You will hear about it. And in Lisa, you will hear it uh, by Antoine. Again, uh, phase transitions, topological defects, Higgs uh, supersymmetry, Ca better coupling to, you know, to particle physics and uh, fundamental physics you could not have. So there is a certain complementarity between gr ground space radio and even CMB measurements. And this is the role of, uh, uh, again, this is a very uh, important uh, uh, first that happened in the gravitational wave community. It is, the Gravitational Wave International Committee, which is preparing exactly the 3G detector development under Shell R01. And only two days ago, uh, and you have here the committee, you have the Michele, I'll probably, uh, not probably, I will replace Federico uh, in Igo, etc. 
and, uh, and studying the science coordination community and it's essentially the investigation of governance structures. It was uh, accepted very, very, uh, with a lot of interest by GWAC, which is the agency supporting this. And you have here essentially uh, recommendations that say, please, it is something that has to be uh, helped. And I think it is a well, uh, well accepted by all agencies. Now, back to, uh, to the strategy. Back to the strategy. Uh, this is the roadmap. And this is also this time, for the first time, we hope we did it resource aware. Not a huge expectation, a uh, huge increase of our, uh, of our uh, uh, budget, uh, but uh, you know, a very, very mild decrease. But we need to have this increase anyway. And uh, of course, we, I will not go through that. Uh, uh, the whole uh, roadmap, if you go through it, I urge you to read it. The co recommendations about science, about organizational issues, and about societal issues that you could have. And something that's very uh, close to me, we're talking about Galileo. Let's talk about the Tycho Brahe too. Uh, I like that in Rannenberg you have a famous uh, a frontispiece that says suspiciendo despicio and despiciendo suspicio, meaning when I look up, in fact, I look down, and when I look down, in fact, I look up. Up and down, in this case, is the uh, universe and the earth. And the earth here, we see that there are many, many synergies with the, uh, with the geosciences because geosphere is a direct object of study of the geosciences, but it, for us, is the target and detecting medium. We deployed detectors in large areas, uh, and hostile environments, sea, desert, underground, long series of data, extreme dating, data manipulation, and of course a lot of, uh, of areas from seismology, mu neutrino imaging, deep ocean, etc. And so we will all be organizing a European workshop in summer 2018. I'm charged to do that. An example of that that I like a lot that comes from my previous lab, the APC, something that in early December came in science where they managed to detect the Tohoku, uh, Tohoku uh, earthquake, one, uh, nine uh, Richter, by a signal of 1.6 nanometer per uh, second square. I remind you the natural seismicity uh, of the Earth is one nanometer, so it, it had to be very strong to be able to see, but they saw it. And they model it perfectly, as you can see here. And it is a fantastic thing. If you really want to go below 9, to have to detect over, I don't know, 7, 8, 6, etc., you need the gravitational wave technology. You need the suspensions. You need all that. That's a fantastic example of how our science can, uh, can, uh, can uh, 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 impact uh, social, societal, societal studies. So coming to my conclusions. These were, I think, the main messages I wanted to say. In a few years, astroparticle physics and cold body passed from a vague domain of interdisciplinary, risky, small group, cowboy organized domain to a mainstream field with a coherent scientific program and leaks to many other domains, from particle physics and astrophysics to geoscience. There, I think our roadmap is coherent and resource aware. It is, that is reasonable. That is not just dreaming. And now, the thing that I see the most urgent task doesn't look exciting, but if we want to do all this fantastic physics, we have to do it. It is the task of organizing large European and global infrastructures to serve this program. And uh, as I said already, it presents many similarities in many subdomains, and this is probably why we should learn from each other.